Here is Synthax, a time traveler from the year 2500, embarking on yet another journey into the past. Today, my destination is Hollywood, California, in the late 20th and early 21st century, to visit the illustrious life of an actor, environmentalist, and filmmaker, Leonardo DiCaprio. It's November 11, 1974, when I land, the day when Leonardo was born to Ermelin Indenbergen and George DiCaprio, in Los Angeles. I watched as his parents, full of dreams and aspirations for their newborn, raised him amidst the glitz and glam of Hollywood, yet, in a humble, working-class neighborhood. His father, George, was an underground comic artist and a distributor of comic books, while his mother, Ermelin, worked as a legal secretary. Young Leonardo's interest in acting was ignited during his early childhood, perhaps due to his father's connections to the creative industry. The DiCaprio household was often visited by comic artists and creatives, undoubtedly influencing and nurturing Leonardo's artistic inclinations. When Leonardo was just a year old, his parents separated. It was a crucial period in his life, but his parents remained amicable, sharing joint custody of their son. Both George and Ermelin were committed to Leonardo's upbringing, ensuring he grew up surrounded by love and care. Despite his parents' split, Leonardo maintains a close relationship with both of them, often acknowledging their contribution to his life and success in numerous interviews. Leonardo's early education occurred in Los Angeles. He attended Seeds Elementary School and later, John Marshall High School. I saw how Leonardo, during his school days, was not the studious type. His focus was elsewhere, drawn to the captivating world of performing arts. Nevertheless, he was intellectually curious, a trait that aided him throughout his acting career in creating vivid, believable characters. His professional acting journey began at the tender age of five when he appeared in a television show, Romper Room. However, his conduct was deemed disruptive, leading to his removal. It was a setback, yet young Leonardo was undeterred. He continued auditioning, landing several advertisements and educational films. The struggle was real. As a teenager, he had difficulty in getting roles due to his mature appearance, which didn't fit the traditional child actor profile. Many rejections later, Leonardo landed a part in a series of Bubble Yum commercials, followed by a stint on the soap opera, Santa Barbara, and the sitcom, Growing Pains. His breakthrough came in 1993, when he starred in, This Boy's Life, sharing screen space with Robert De Niro. His performance was applauded, and it was clear that a bright future awaited Leonardo in Hollywood. Around the same period, he starred in, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, a performance that earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Throughout the late 1990s, Leonardo's career took off as he starred in one hit after another. His performance in, Romeo Plus Juliet, made him a favorite among young audiences, and his role in James Cameron's, Titanic, propelled him to international stardom. However, the overnight fame was overwhelming. Leonardo, grappling with the sudden attention, took a hiatus from mainstream cinema and focused on more complex, challenging roles in less commercial films. During the early 2000s, he starred in films like, The Beach, Catch Me If You Can, and, Gangs of New York, showcasing his diverse acting abilities. In 2002, he started his production company, Appian Way Productions, further solidifying his commitment to the film industry. Leonardo DiCaprio's professional life, however, is only one part of his story. Away from the screen, he's been equally active, passionately dedicating himself to environmental causes. He established the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation in 1998, intending to support organizations and initiatives committed to securing a sustainable future for our planet. His dedication to environmentalism led him to meet and work with many influential people, including former U.S. President Barack Obama and Pope Francis. Leonardo, not one to separate his professional and personal passions, starred and produced the documentary, Before the Flood, aiming to educate the public on the realities of climate change. Relationship-wise, Leonardo has had his share of high-profile romances. His list of former partners reads like a who's who of the modeling industry, with names such as Giselle Bunchen and Bar Rafaeli making the rounds. However, Leonardo has been notoriously private about his love life, rarely speaking about it in interviews. His relationships have not only been with his romantic partners but also with his co-stars and collaborators in the film industry. He formed a close professional relationship with director Martin Scorsese, leading to several successful collaborations, including, The Aviator, The Departed, Shutter Island, and, The Wolf of Wall Street. His friendship with fellow actor Tobey Maguire is a prominent one. The two have been friends since they were teenagers, navigating the industry together, even co-starring in films like, This Boy's Life, 
and The Great Gatsby. These bonds, I noticed, played a significant role in Leonardo's life, grounding him amidst the Hollywood frenzy. Leonardo's relationship with his mother, Ermelin, is especially touching. He often credits his mother for his success, acknowledging her sacrifices to ensure he had opportunities to flourish. Throughout my time travel, I've observed how Ermelin's presence at Leonardo's premieres and award shows stands as a testament to their close bond. On the professional front, Leonardo's career went from strength to strength. By the mid-2000s, he was one of the most sought-after actors in Hollywood, with roles in films like Blood Diamond and Inception, adding to his ever-growing repertoire. However, despite his multiple Academy Award nominations, the elusive Oscar win seemed to evade him. This became a running theme in Hollywood and among fans, prompting jokes and memes about Leonardo's Oscar-less status. Yet, the much-awaited moment arrived at the 2016 Academy Awards when Leonardo won the Best Actor Oscar for The Revenant. His acceptance speech was memorable, highlighting his passion for environmental activism, a moment that will forever be etched in the annals of Hollywood history. Following his Oscar win, Leonardo continued to push the boundaries of his craft. He delved deeper into the realms of film production and environmental activism, using his influence to highlight pressing environmental issues. For instance, his executive production of the documentary, Sea of Shadows, aimed to shed light on the plight of the critically endangered Vaquita porpoise. Leveraging his platform for such causes solidified Leonardo's status not only as an accomplished actor but a dedicated environmentalist as well. While Leonardo was making strides professionally, his personal life maintained its characteristic privacy. Rumors of his relationships were ever-present in tabloids, yet Leonardo seldom gave them attention. Throughout my observations, it became clear that he valued his privacy, often choosing to express himself through his work rather than public statements. One aspect of his life that often drew media attention was his circle of friends, commonly referred to as the Pussy Posse. This group included Tobey Maguire, Lucas Haas, and other rising stars of the 90s. However, with maturity, the group seemed to disband, each member focusing on their individual careers. Despite this, Leonardo maintained his close friendships, particularly with Maguire and Haas. Leonardo's relationship with his father, George, was another fascinating facet of his life. Although his parents were separated, George DiCaprio played an active role in his son's life, introducing him to a world of alternative culture and art. It's clear that George's influence had a profound impact on Leonardo's artistic choices and his engagement with environmental activism. His career took an exciting turn when he ventured into television production with the crime drama series, The Shining Girls, starring Elizabeth Moss. Leonardo's move into television showcased his adaptability to evolving entertainment landscapes, furthering his dedication to storytelling in all its forms. By this time, Leonardo had become a figure synonymous with Hollywood. However, fame and success didn't deter him from his environmental pursuits. He continued championing climate change mitigation, wildlife conservation, and indigenous rights through his foundation. His philanthropy reached new heights in 2020 when his organization pledged $12 million for COVID-19 relief efforts. Over the years, Leonardo's dedication to environmentalism garnered him several accolades, including the Clinton Global Citizen Award. In 2016, he was designated as the United Nations Messenger of Peace for Climate Change, using this platform to address the urgency of implementing climate solutions. In his acting career, he continued to collaborate with Martin Scorsese, further solidifying their professional bond. They embarked on a project called, Killers of the Flower Moon, a historical crime drama featuring Robert De Niro. The anticipation surrounding the film was immense, symbolizing another potential landmark in Leonardo's career. Through my time-traveling lens, I saw Leonardo's life as a tapestry of rich experiences. His journey wasn't merely about stardom, but about using that fame as a force for good. He balanced his commitment to the arts and the environment in a way few celebrities have managed to do. His private life, while guarded from the public eye, provided glimpses of a man who valued his relationships. From his family to his friends and partners, Leonardo demonstrated a depth of character that extended beyond his screen performances. Despite his high-profile status, he strived to maintain the authenticity of his personal connections. On the professional front, his journey from a teenage actor to an Oscar-winning star and producer was nothing short of extraordinary. His acting prowess, coupled with his astute sense of selecting the right projects, paved the way for a successful Hollywood career. He was able to withstand the pressures of the industry while staying true to his artistic vision. As I move closer to my departure, I see Leonardo in the later stages of his career, 
where he still holds a formidable presence in the industry. His roles became more diverse, his performances deeper, and his dedication to his craft unwavering. His environmental advocacy didn't slow down either. He continued to utilize his foundation and influence to drive significant environmental initiatives, keeping the conversation around climate change and conservation alive. Until we meet again, farewell.